determined to win it back there was Karen. Oh, what a goal! That is a beauty by Karen Duggan. Delighted to be joined by Karen Duggan, uh, who will be playing for P Mount United in the FAI Cup final on Saturday. I'm going to be there. Uh, they're going to be taking on Cork City as well. But um, Karen, in an FAI Cup week, what's it generally like for you? Um, traditionally, uh, prior to this kind of pandemic world we're living in. Yeah, previously um, it's a bit different. Like you'd be talking about getting new gear and kind of going to see stadium and stuff like that so we don't have that this year and um, we've just kind of kept with our normal routine and I kind of favor that I think it, it sometimes it can hype it up too much I think we've uh, definitely fallen victim to that before where we've overhyped the game and then ended up not performing so I think that we're all a bit more level-headed going into this one Um there's a bit less hype around it and we can just kind of concentrate on the football a bit more which is good. Yeah and uh I suppose going back to 2012, which would be, I believe, your first experience of the final. Um, in terms of nerves and dealing with it, how did you find it that first time? To be honest, it's so long ago now that I actually can't even remember it. Um, my dad had to tell me what happened in that match. I have a terrible memory for games. I was reminded often enough that we lost it all right, but uh, I'd imagine I was quite nervous because it would have been my first experience of a real big cup final. Um, obviously, I'd come from Kilkenny and played in the Waterford League and we didn't quite have that same uh, hype around those kind of games down there. So um, I'm sure I was very nervous. Um, been less nervous as, as they've gone on. The results haven't changed, but um, you, do, you do learn to cope with them a bit better um, as you go through them. Yeah, and in terms of the venue, how does... well? Do you, does that have an effect for you? Because Daly Mount was the first one and then you've played the Aviva, Tala Stadium's coming up this time. Um, does it make a difference in those big deciders? It does. It definitely does. Um, I actually think the game in Daly Mount probably had the best quality um, when you look back at them. Um, the Aviva, while it's an amazing experience and it's something that I'll, I'll cherish, it, it doesn't make for a fantastic game just due to the size of the pitch um i think it's it's you're you're wrecked after about 60 minutes on it so sometimes that can take a little bit away from the quality of of the game and you often see that in a cup final that the quality isn't fantastic but i definitely think the size of the aviva is an attribute to that and um i'm happy enough that it's in in tala i mean it's the home of women's football in this country um it's slightly more enclosed than the aviva it's just huge and it's echoey and um it, it kind of weighs down in you a little bit um so I'm, I'm happy with the move I know there's been a, a bit of criticism about it but I think if you're um kind of building this up as a, a day just for the women um which it is now and that's fantastic and day of women's sport on Saturday especially on RTE but I think that you should do it in the home of women's football we kind of want to make Tala a fortress especially for the national team and and it'll be good to for girls who are trying to break their way into that team to get experience in Tala as well. Aside from the venue as well, um, as you mentioned, the Aviva, there's a, I suppose with the, uh, the bigger size of it, it does have an effect. Uh, what did you take from last season's final in terms of what happened on the pitch? Uh, again, uh, the final defeats you've experienced, they're always by the odd goal. Um, but what specifically would you have taken away from the 2019 decider? Um the 2019 one was was different to the 2018 one. The 2018 one, I feel like we really just didn't perform at all. We didn't show up. Um, last year, we did. We showed up to an extent, but I think that we found it hard to lift ourselves up to the level that we had done in the league. Um, I think the league took an awful lot out of us last year. It had taken seven years for P-Man to get back to winning ways in the league. And uh, obviously, we had all those celebrations and we found it hard to kind of reach those highs again. It was our fourth time playing Wexford that year, having beaten them three times in the league. They, they knew us very well um, and they had a fantastic start. So I think that that's something we really need to concentrate on this, this year, just being solid for the first 10 minutes, trying not to concede because that does have an effect on your head. And like I said, in a pitch the size of the Aviva, goals aren't going to be easy to come by. You're up and down and, and your, your legs are worn after 60, 70 minutes. So I think getting off to a good start is something that we really need to concentrate on ourselves. Yeah, and uh, you scored a wonder goal as well um, in, in last year's <laughs> final. Um, I was just looking at celebrations as well. I don't know if you had anything planned, but your teammates didn't really give you time to, <laughs> to, no, to perform I definitely, any type of celebration. It was, I definitely didn't have that in plan because it's it's so rare. It would be it would be pretty embarrassing if I did have a, a trademark celebration. So, uh, no, that was kind of 
again, it was just one of those ones that you just try and hit. You, we were trying to get back into the game already at that point, so um, we needed something. But we again, the concentration levels are something we needed to work on. I think we went down again within 90 seconds of that. So we need to learn to, to deal with those setbacks. I think we've done that this year. Um, there's been games where we haven't played particularly well or we've conceded goals that we weren't expecting to concede, but we've bounced back. Um, I think the experience, particularly in the last game that we played Shells, where they were dominating us probably for the first half and then we were we bounced back and ended up finishing really, really strongly. I think that um, our heads are a bit more level when it comes to dealing with those kind of situations now. Yeah, and uh, again, you're playing Cork City um, in this year's final on Saturday and you beat them recently, 3-0. Um, again, they can be kind of double-edged swords those times where you play them, uh, play an opposition and then you're playing them again um, just off the back of a win because you'll gain confidence from it. But at the same time, it's almost like a motivator, I guess, for, for the opponent. So I guess you're looking at it in a kind of wary sense that uh, you can't re- you're not really judging it on the previous result. No, and last year will have shown us that the league means nothing when it comes to the cup having gone to Wexford and then they came and they beat us and they had a real dominance in the cup. Um, we kind of got that monkey off our back in beating them in the semi-final this year, but we do have that wariness in the back of our head. I've lost the year I was playing for UCD Waves. I think we also beat them in the league and they came to the Viva and they beat us there. So we're experienced in in that knowing that the league form means nothing. You can see it even in the men's game, obviously. Shamrock Rovers had a flawless year and then Dundalk managed to pull it out of the bag for them um, on the day. So, yeah, anything can happen on the day, but we are going to be very, very focused on the task in hand. Um, we've had a kind of a normal week of preparation, um, which is good. And, yeah, we'll be looking forward to it, but we we'll definitely won't be taking that for granted. Yeah, and uh, just on the international scene as well, um, kind of looking from afar, um, obviously Ireland missed out on qualification, um, but the way Vera Powell was speaking after the game, that uh, there was the sense that uh, like Ireland are going places. And for you, kind of watching it from afar now, do you get that sense as well that uh, there is progression being made and that, in the words of Powell, that we are likely at some point to kind of break that duck and qualify for something? Yeah, I think so. Like the girls that are involved now, like there's some there's massive talent in the squad and they're getting on phenomenally well at, at club level. But we, we've been saying that same thing, that we're improving and we'll get there for a few campaigns now. Um, last time, maybe for the World Cup qualifying campaign, it was a very difficult group having Holland and Norway. So that was just a bridge too far. But I think when the draw was made for this Euro campaign, I think everyone really thought that this would be the one. And yet we're still in the same position saying, oh, we're going places, we're going places. The World Cup is notoriously more hard to qualify. So that's what's next. So really, are we looking at a four-year plan, looking at the next Euros? Um, and it, it's still, it's a little disappointing. I do think there are improvements. I think that the way that the senior team are treated now is, is much better, but there's definitely still work to be done because if you look at the results, they haven't quite translated from the progress that the girls are making individually and the resources that they're being given when they're in camp. It's probably what needs to happen outside of camp in terms of development in this country, making sure the girls are all at the right club, that they're before international matches, that they're playing for their clubs 90 minutes, week in, week out. So um, there's still a a lot of thought and a lot of development that needs to go into it. And it's not good enough to say we're nearly there anymore because we've been saying that for so long. So I think that, um, yeah, over the next couple of years that we really, really need to focus on why we haven't qualified yet. Yeah, and uh, Vera uh, was speaking about creating this holistic plan and uh, uh, I think it's going to be announced in January or in and around that time, but it kind of harks back a bit to the the press conference you gave at the time back in 2017 and uh, where there were basically basic stuff that uh, were not being provided uh, for you. And as you said, there are kind of improvements, but from the feedback of your P-Mount teammates in the squad, do you feel that there is like some of that stuff is being well, has improved in terms of obviously things like uh, you know wearing the training kit and that I think I would imagine that has been uh, <laughs> that's been improved yeah. but are other thing other basic uh, basic issues have they been ironed out do you feel um, some of them have like all those little bits that were quick fixes they're definitely all there um, and some strides have been made I mean 
under Colin, Colin Bell's regime, there was um, more home-based training and things like that. And Vera spoke about it after the match that they will be on a weekly basis next year and she's going to help the girls train with boys' teams. And that is what is needed. But for me, it's coming a couple of years too late. I mean, this was the qualifying campaign that we needed to win. Um, this was the group that we definitely he should have, well, not should have, the girls did very well to beat Ukraine in the first game, but it was a real opportunity for them. So I'm just a bit frustrated given that that was back in 2017. And I know the track suits got a lot of, of press and things like that, but the main thing that we were asking for was more training and better conditions around those training. So it, the, those things have started, but there hasn't been enough consistency around them. Um, and I think that we also need to make sure that the Women's National League is being paid attention to and that girls are getting the opportunity to go into development squads from there because it's fantastic that the girls are going professional, but the Women's National League is, is their stepping stone for that. Um, so I think focus needs to come back to basics on the ground in Ireland um, and, and maybe not kind of pass the buck on to, to girls at club level. Yeah, and you mentioned a couple of years ago, I think it was underage structures at clubs and that that was key. And I think at the time you mentioned Shelburne were doing quite well on that front, P-Mount as well. Um, overall, do you feel that that's like on the up? Yeah, in the that sense that of, definitely... That, that, at least yeah. that's improving. Yeah, and, and the provision of an under-17 Women's National League is fantastic for that. Um, so I think the pathway really is getting girls playing with boys when they're younger and then making sure when they can't play with the boys any longer that there's a high level stepping stone. So the under 17 is that, and then you've got up to senior level in the women's national league. But again, that's putting a lot of onus on clubs. Um, and it, I think that in an amateur country that the association needs to also make more provisions um, in order to help progression because everyone's a volunteer you know people in PMAG they've been so phenomenal for me and for so many of the girls but they're doing it off their own bat they're not getting anything back from it only pride hopefully if we win something but um as a professional organization I think that's where we need more um and we need that the FAI to step in yeah and I suppose finally in, in that sense because um I guess you're looking at the overview sense of it and uh, I suppose the different structures and things do you, do you see yourself maybe at some point in the future taking on a role where um some of the things you've experienced you can kind of uh, I suppose bring to the fore and um, whether that's organizationally or from the inside or the outside even yeah possibly um I don't know based on some <laughs> of the feedback I've gotten recently I have people who've worked there if I'd I'd love to be in there right now. I think it's a really difficult place for a lot of people. Um, I, I have a lot of respect for a lot of people within the organization and they've been tired with a brush, obviously, and we're trying to step away from that awful reputation that was built um, over the last few years. Um, I, I would love to see the game in this country develop and if I can help in any way, I will. Um, might be too opinionated at the moment to do that, but uh, I'm still because I'm still playing club level. I'm just going to keep concentrating and enjoying my football. But yeah, I can't, um, I can't yeah. imagine fully stepping away from the game uh, when yeah. that's done. But yeah, it's it's something I would consider. Yeah, yeah, and definitely you have something way more important as in a cup final on Saturday as well. Yeah. Before thinking of all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, anyway, best of luck on on Saturday. Thank you so um, much. It's going to be live on RT, of course. Uh, RT two, uh, a super Saturday of women's sport as well. So exciting for a lot of people. Um, and I'll be there as well, freezing in the stands, doing the match <laughs> reports or whatever. So I might catch you at it. But uh, thanks a million for uh, for taking the time and uh, best of luck again. Thanks a million.